Hi! Hello! How are you? Can you see me? I can see you. Do you see me over here? Yeah, over here. Back over here. Yeah, yeah, over here. Right here. That's it. Yeah, come on. Come on in there. That's it. Yeah. Over here. Oh, man. Okay, good. Now that I've got your attention, my second point is, what do you do when you're trying to keep your audience's attention and it just starts wandering? You ever have that happen? You're talking to your audience and just suddenly you realize your audience is somewhere else. You don't know why, you don't know what happened, but suddenly they're somewhere else. They're in a different place. It may have been because you're going through and talking about something that's a little bit complex and you're not sure if the audience is getting it. it. Might be you've got some sort of activity plan and you're trying to get the audience after it. You've got some sort of breakout thing going on and people are talking to each other and you're trying to get their attention back. Whatever it is, you've lost the attention of your audience and now you've got to get it back. If you don't do it right, your audience is gone, completely gone. Their mind is looking over here, they're looking at this, they're looking at that, they're looking everywhere except you at the front of the room. And now there's so many distractions. People have their blackberries and their blueberries and their strawberries and their cranberries. I've heard it called weapons of mass distraction. So that all this different stuff is competing with you up here on stage and if you lose their attention because they're in their PDA and you don't get it back, that's it. They'll just start doing their homework or doing their schoolwork or doing their business work or whatever and they won't pay any attention to you. So what do you do? How do you get your audience's attention back? Well, there are some things you can do. And if you do these things, guaranteed to get your audience back focused on you. What you do with it after it, that is up to you. Once their attention is focused on you, you've got to have some sort of content that they're interested in and want to follow up on. But at least they're intentionally back on you. And these are simple ways you can bring the audience back to you. Simple things you can do that are guaranteed to get the audience's attention. So when you find the audience's attention wandering, you can always pull them back. First thing is something very simple but very powerful. It goes down to a very deep psychological nature that we have. And if you do this, it's guaranteed to get the audience's attention and keep it. And maybe even make them a little bit nervous. But it's highly effective if you find you lost the audience. Second thing we'll talk about is something that you use all the time. You use every day. It's something that you're up there doing. It's that tool that you use and how you use it that will determine whether you keep or lose your audience's attention. And if you're able to get that attention back. It's use of that tool that you're using all the time, effective use of it, that's going to get your audience's attention. Simple things you can do, powerful things you can do to make that tool you use very, very effective. And the final thing you'll learn today is about what you do in breakout sessions, breakout situations. The audience has gone off to some activity, they're doing something else, they're not really focused on you. They're suddenly focused on something else. They're talking with their neighbor. They're interacting with things. They're building a, a boat or a crane or discussing world peace or whatever activity it is you've had them do. And they're focused on that, not on you. This third thing is a way to get that audience back. So today, I'm going to go through these three things. Starting out with the first one, the one that's going to be the most direct. The second one that you use all the time, show you some different ways to use that tool. And then the third tool, very effective when you're doing breakout activities. 
It's all about letting your audience know, hey, I'm over here. The first tool is something that if you don't use it, you won't ever really get that strong connection with the audience you want. It's a tool that if you use right at the very beginning of your talk, you can get a really deep connection and get your audience's attention very quickly, very powerfully. Many speakers don't use this tool because they're afraid of it. They're afraid of the power of it. They're afraid they might mishandle it. They're afraid it might be an awkward situation. So they don't use the tool entirely at all. As a result, they don't connect in as deeply with their audience as they could. Those speakers who put those fears aside and start using this tool, they find that they get a very deep connection, a very strong connection with their audience. And most importantly, they get all of the audience's attention. Unlike what happens with many speakers where the audience is really paying attention, people, speakers who use this tool find out the audience is right there with them. Right there from the very beginning. The audience is right there with them, right there focused, right there concentrated on what they're saying. And the first tool is the look. The look. All about the look. Before you begin your talk or your speech, you simply look at the audience. That's all it is. Look to help them learn. Look to help them learn. So you get up there, you're about ready to begin the speech. Before you do anything, before you say anything, you get up on stage and you You look. You look first. And the reason you look is because quite often when people get into an auditorium, into any large places, they got a lot of stuff to do. And there's a lot of waiting time before you actually begin. So people have got their PDAs out, all their stuff out. Sure, they've heard the introduction of the person before, telling them that you're going to be up next. And they know you're going to be up next. That's fine. But They'll get to that other stuff in a little bit. They want to finish up the stuff they're doing. But if you look at them directly beforehand, watch them, they'll suddenly realize that it got very quiet. Very quiet. And then they'll realize that, okay, things are going to begin. Now things are going to begin. Also, if people have a difficulty putting things away or just wrapping things up, because maybe they're waiting a long time for you to speak and you finally get up to speak, they've got to wrap things up, that's fine. Let them wrap things up. Let them put things away. Another power of the look is that it pulls people in because they start to think in their mind, what are you going to say? What are you going to talk about? It focuses their attention in on you, the speaker, and on your speech, and on the subject that they decided they wanted to hear. Many times, people in your audience will be there because they want to be there. There may be times when you're in a captive audience where they're forced to be there, and that's a difficult situation, and that requires some other work entirely. But if you have an audience that's voluntarily there, they really want to get this information, and you're just looking at them, making them wait just a little bit longer, you're going to pull their attention in, and they're going to quiet down because they're going to say, okay, we're going to quiet down. You give us what we want to hear. That's the deal. They'll understand that. The look is powerful because it's psychological. Just looking at someone without doing anyone, without doing anything, indicates you're kind of sizing things up. It's not an attack. It's not a retreat. It's just waiting. It's just kind of waiting. And when you get people waiting enough, then they get anxious for something to happen. So if you make people wait, they'll be interested for you to happen to them. So if you have an audience a little bit distracted, get them right from the beginning. 
get them with the look. And the second tool is something that you use all the time anyway. Use it all the time. The speaker, it's the tool you're always using, and yet if you don't use the second tool well, it can create problems because your audience attentions wander and you can't get it back because you didn't use the second tool well. It happens a lot. If that happens, you're audience attention wanders, you can't get it back, you don't understand how to use the second tool well, then your whole speech can kind of fall apart in front of you. Because the audience are at their PDAs or Blackberries or whatever, and they're not paying attention to you and your message. If you use the second tool well, then you pull the audience back in. The tension may be lapsing a little bit, you can always get them right back in because you know how to get their attention. It's a simple thing to do. It's very easy. It comes as a second nature to a speaker to use this tool, but fortunately, many times, speakers don't use the tool well. If you know how to use the tool well, it will be effective. It may seem incredibly simple to say this, but really a very effective tool for getting the audience's attention back. Some simple things you can do to make sure that that connection, even if it gets a little bit off, a little bit not there, to get it back and make sure that connection happens, or make sure at least you reconnect. And the second tool is the voice. The voice. Just like I talked about the look, the voice can be very effective. Look is what happens when you start off at the beginning. The voice is what keeps it there all the way through. Sometimes simple things like just lowering your voice or slowing down the pace of your speech can bring an audience back. So if you're talking about something, you're kind of in a high-pitched voice, and it's going on and on like this, and the audience isn't really paying attention, you're just kind of babbling along, stop, and then lower your voice. And stop just a little bit. And that can pull the audience's attention right back. A low voice connects. A low voice gets attention. A low voice pulls the audience in. You can also speak more slowly. Nothing the matter with speaking quickly. For sure, fine, speak quickly, talk about whatever you want, just let the words roll off your tongue. But you come to that point, you really want the audience to get, speak slowly. And lower your voice. Now, lowering your voice might take a little bit of work. It can be a challenge to lower your voice. It's worth the work. Just keep lowering it, lowering it, lowering it until you finally get it low. Because a low voice connects. A low voice has authority. A low voice has power. Think of James Earl Jones. He's doing that thing with Darth Vader. That voice, that incredible voice people connected with and really got people's attention. It's that low, steady, calm voice. That's the voice that really gets people's attention. And many speakers don't use the voice, but if you use the voice, you can really connect in because the voice is a powerful tool. It's a powerful way to get back that connection. A powerful way to really connect in strongly with your audience. And as you're going through your presentation, be aware of your voice. Be aware of your voice and how your voice is affecting. And if you find your audience's attention wavering, that's all right. Bring the voice down. Slow the voice down. Make that connection. 
the final tool is something you'll use when you have an activity, some sort of activity going on. And it's a tool that a lot of speakers don't know how to use. And because they don't know how to use it and don't use it, they have activities and they tend to get away from them. You might have seen this happen. Speaker, the speaker says, the audience, are we going to break into little parts here? We're going to go into different sections and talk with your neighbor and discuss some of the things we're talking about. Then we'll have a little break, and you just keep talking back and forth, and then I'll bring you back in after that break, and we'll start discussing, we'll start talking a little bit about what we learned in that break. It's great. My problem is, the speaker never really gets the audience back. They're still kind of chatting back and forth and enjoying that, and really resent the speaker coming in there and breaking things up. The speaker starts shouting and the audience starts ignoring them. It's a mess. But there are simple things you can do as a speaker. If you have an activity plan to get that audience back, simple thing you can do to make sure you've got that audience's attention, make sure you regain that audience's attention. The challenge of an activity is you're basically saying to an audience, do your own thing, just ignore me. The audience keeps ignoring you even after that activity is supposed to be over. That's a problem. But if you use this tool, this final tool well, you can get your audience back. Even if they've gone to some sort of activity, they've got some stuff going on, get them back, pull them back in so you don't lose your audience. It's a delicate balance, but this tool can really help to make that happen. And the final tool is the sound. The sound. Just make a sound. A sound can snap people right out of what they're doing and getting them back and focused on you, what you're talking about. And there are different ways people do it. Sometimes, if you like props, people have a, a bell. At the end of the activity, the activity's over, so all right, then you ring the bell. All right, everybody, come back. Gets everybody's attention. It's a sound. Now, if you stand up there and you just start trying to scream at them and yell at them and say, hey, come on, over here, let's pay attention now. That's not going to work because they're already talking to each other and maybe screaming out there on the floor. They need to have a sound, not a voice. Not a pause, because a pause is not going to help. Not a look, they're not paying attention to you. A sound. That sound will get them back. A bell is wonderful. A bell gets everybody's attention. There's a reason why fire alarms are quite often bells, or there's a fire alarm bell. Because that bell gets people's attention. A bell just wakes people up. So if you want to get people's attention, you got a big bell, great. But you don't have to use a big bell. Any sound will do, provided it's loud enough. If you have a microphone, it's loud enough, you can just snap your fingers into the microphone. That can get people's attention. It's a strange enough sound, you can pull them back. But unfortunately, you may not have a microphone. So it may just be you up there trying to out yell an entire audience of people out there, and you don't have a bell, and you're stuck, well, it's all right. There's still something you can do, a sound you can make to get people back. All you have to do is say, clap once if you can hear me, and then clap. Clap once if you can hear me. Clap once if you can hear me. Clap once if you can hear me. Just like that. The clap gets people's attention, then they listen to what you're saying, and then they'll start clapping. And after a while, you've got half the audience clapping and half the audience talking, and the ones who are talking will start realizing, hey, something's going on with the rest of the audience. That'll pull people back in. Whether it's a bell, or a snap, or tapping in the microphone, or just a really loud clap, it's all about sound, creating a different sound. 
So if you have an activity going on, you want to bring people back, just remember, bring in the sound. All right, let's wrap things up now. A lot of things you covered in a very short time. The very important and very powerful to use as a speaker when you lose the attention of the audience. Sometimes you lose the attention of the audience right from the beginning. So you want to make sure you've got that audience's attention right at the beginning of what you're saying. Sometimes you lose your attention to the audience in the middle. In that case, you've got to have some sort of method, some sort of a tool to use to get that audience's attention back. And if you're doing an activity, definitely need to have some sort of tool you can use to get the audience's attention because you've given away all that audience's attention. They're off doing something by themselves. You want to pull them back somehow, so you need a tool to help you do that. First tool we talked about was the look. Just standing there looking at the audience. Before you starts talking before you start speaking before anything happens just stop and look and watch the audience people will be doing their PDAs or whatever but after a while they'll notice nothing's happening and you're just standing there looking at them and psychologically they'll become aware that they're being looked at and they'll start focusing in on that and saying oh okay and they'll start putting things away. You don't need to say a word. You don't need to say anything about cell phones or put your cell phones or PDA. None of that. Just stand there. Look at the audience. It's an amazingly effective way to get the audience to quiet down and focus in. And as you're giving your talk, you're going through, remember your voice. Remember your voice and how you can use your voice to pull the audience back in. And there's certain voice cues you can give that are really effective. If you're just talking on in a kind of middle range voice and you're going on and on about things and talking about this, that, and the other thing and going on and on, etc., people don't pay too much attention to this sort of thing. It just kind of rattles along and they go a little bit this, that. But if you drop your voice and slow down, then people will pay attention. Now be careful you don't do that all the time. Not everything you say is important. Sometimes you're talking in the middle voice, that's fine, no problem at all. You just want to rattle on a bunch of stuff going on, they don't need to focus on that, but the most important thing, you drop your voice and slow it down. Use the voice to pull back in your audience during your speech when their attention goes to something else. And then finally, the activity. If you have an activity, you let the audience go off and do whatever they want, and they're trying to pull them back, it's all about the sound. Use a sound to get people back. Not your voice, not a look, not a pause, but a sound. One thing you might do is have a big bell. You can just kind of ring. That works fine happen to have a bell lying around. But if you do an activity and you forgot the bell, or if you don't use bells, you have to do something else. A simple thing you can do is, if you have a microphone, you can tap the microphone or snap into the microphone loudly. That'll get people's attention. Simplest thing you can do is just say, clap once if you can hear me. Clap once if you can hear me. Clap once if you can hear me. Practice making that clap as loud as you possibly can. So it's really loud. Gets everybody's attention. Clap once if you can hear me. And then as people start clapping, the rest of the audience realize, hey, something's going on. Better pay attention. When you're up there talking and you lose the audience, it can be scary. You're looking around at the audience and they're looking anywhere but at you. That can be a huge, huge issue. And as you get nervous, you get scared, you get more worried, you fall apart, that can be really, really bad. But if you use these tools, 
don't have to be afraid. You pull back in, you center, you focus on the things you need to focus on, you get back that audience's attention, and you keep it. And if they slide off somewhere else, you get it back again, using these very important tools. So, when you're going out there, and you notice the audience a little bit skittish, you're trying an activity, you can't quite get their attention back, use the tools you learned today to make sure you don't have to say, over 